Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the show where we talk about the big time professional wrestling in these parts uh, for this week. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With us, the regulars on the show. Uh, first of all, he's Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox, proprietor of PanelRiot.com. Hi, everybody. Uh, it is I, Papa Lunchbox. I am so happy with uh, all of the emails that you sent in with your dick suits that I had uh, I had mentioned last week. You had some great dick suits out there. Keep sending them in, panelriot at gmail.com, uh, goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Show us your dick suits. Right. And also, um, from the land of dick suits in San Antonio, Texas, it's Eamon, uh, Peyton at Eamon to please the commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Hi, yeah, uh, actually I got a bone to pick with you, uh, Lunchbox, because uh, I, I got my dick suit in the mail finally. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had to return it, though. I, I, I'm shocked you would send me one that was stained. I mean, honestly. But let's, let's, let's be real here. That's not about professional dick suit manufacturers, you know, <laughs> distribute their products. It wasn't stained when I put it in the mail. These things stain themselves. Fair enough. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, <laughs> and we'll get to our other couple of special, special guests here in a moment. Um, cashing uh, something in. Uh, but with us, uh, I'm sorry, but you can check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, on YouTube, all the places, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all the links over there for this and so many other shows, including the Great Mayhem Minute we've been doing every morning, the wrap-up shows, and whatever else these guys come up with. It, it seems like we have a new show every other week. You can also drop us a line to that uh, phone number at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at... Good time. Good time. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yeah, you guys can do the good times, even though I haven't introduced you yet. Certainly. Um, <laughs> Who are these people? Who are these people? Uh, you guys will please check out BasicSickness.com for our intro, outro, music. Uh, great artists from here in the Pittsburgh area. And, of course, you can join us live every Tuesday at Live.SorgatronMedia.com. Tonight, a special feature is you get a new name, usually female, like uh, uh, Rhonda FJ Town uh, earlier tonight, or Bethany 2K who we'll speak to in a moment. Um, yeah, we had a little bit of a chat room issue, so we're, we're working that. And we'll, I, can, I can't tell you it'll be better next week, but I can tell you it'll be different. <laughs> <laughs> and also you can support us, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, we're a lot of, uh, we have a new executive producer on the show. Thank you, buddy Landell at Landell deep. What? Whoa. I got a message. I got a message. Um, but anyways, uh, so you, you can go to wrestling mayhem. I'm sorry, patreoncom slash wrestling mayhem show. Become a part of the show. Become our bosses, which means sometimes you can do whatever the heck you want, <laughs> like cash in your Patreon in the bank, like two gentlemen. We scheduled one person because they went on really bad last yep. week. I said, like, we'll have you on next week. We'll have you part of the Mayhem yep. Mania with Matt Carlin's mainstream map dot blogspot dot com. He's been doing such a great job on the midweek mayhem. He's bringing he's bringing some authenticity and some rolling of the R's to the Lucha Underground names. He is Antonio Garza of the Wrestling Revolution dot com. Main him is at zero two K on the Twitters as well. How you doing? First time on the main show. Congratulations. I know it's it's my grand debut, and unfortunately, I don't have my dick suit because uh, apparently Mexico doesn't allow dick suits, so it got lost in the border. It's a shame. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where do you hail from? Fucking customs. I I'm in El Paso, Texas. Uh, the home of Eddie Guerrero. There you go. There you go. We got San Antonio and El Paso now re uh, represented. Um, they so got Pittsburgh, huh? We're coming for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting more Texas no, on this show. No, he said he didn't get his dick suit. No, no, he didn't. He's not coming for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and I think you were the first Patreon supporter too, right? 
Yes, yes. Awesome. Well, this is the beginning. Also, also the number two guy. He is mm -hmm. uh, the other Patreon. He is Bo. Diggity! That is Woo! right. Woo! I had to do a special right. sincere on. I, uh, I, I asked, and this is this is the magic that you can have if you are a Patreon subscriber. I asked three minutes ago to be on the show. Yes, I just said, "Be in the spot," because I can do that. Because well, yep. I'm the boss around here. I'm number two, which means I'm the shit. And uh, I've had many, many tachos tonight. They were delicious, and they are now in my body, and now I'm going to talk to you to find people. That's fantastic. It'll be in these runoff. You know why. And he's cashed in. Thank you. Um, so with that, uh, <laughs> wow. So let's get into it. Um, we had a big pay-per-view. Big. We, we had a pay-per-view. Or a network show <laughs> or whatever we call it. I don't know. It's free this month. I don't know why I paid for the network. Uh, maybe you guys do, but WWE Fastlane was this past weekend, um, and uh, it was a mixed bag uh, for something that's the uh, the, the last stop on the way to road to WrestleMania. I don't know. I, I the metaphor of this pay per view is completely lost on me, guys. Um, except for I don't know, LB. I, I mean, you're 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 uh, well. If I bring you out the closet, a NASCAR fan. I mean, I, I mean, we, what Robin's Robin's racing Sorg. What rubbing? I would like we're rubbing and racing. I would like to point out the, that uh, Sunday was a redneck Super Bowl. Uh, you had the Daytona 500 and a WWE pay per view on the same day. Yep. I mean, the real winner. The real winner was Bud Light. But <laughs> there's oddly enough, was, the Daytona 500 was more violent than the WWE pay per view. Yes. Uh, I I would like to point out that I also did uh, I received my dick suit. I also had to return it for being sized improperly. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, way too, way too, way too uh, skinny around around the waist. Anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah, I I I I think that fast lane was. The the metaphor was like, hey, this is where we this is where we go. We go zoom zoom to WrestleMania. Get it? Like and like, it, like motion. And it felt like a three hour Sunday night raw. It like did. It, it just did. didn't feel like anything of any sort of merit. It was like, oh look at this shit. It's a raw. Hooray. I can sum the pay per view up for you uh by saying this. Sorg said, We're gonna talk about fast lane. And I said, Okay, let me look it up on Wikipedia because I don't remember what happened. And you were there. You watched it with us. I was you, there. I watched you, it live. You brought, this was, you brought guests. This was two nights ago that this happened. <laughs> and the only thing that I was able to bring to memory was, oh, yeah, Roman Reigns. Uh, mm. That's it. Mm. Done. That's to be fair. Over. I mean, to be fair, and, and this is the conversation. I've been having a lot of this conversation, actually, in Google Plus uh, about Fastlane afterwards. Um, you know, what happened to the first half of the show? Uh, were these bad matches or was the crowd just crapping on it? Um, I, I would say they were pretty mediocre matches. We weren't listening to the crowd for the most part. We were all talking amongst ourselves. True, true, true. But I mean, it definitely the, the, you noticed. Like, I, I still noticed amongst our talking that there was just no reaction from the crowd. Uh, there were, they weren't necessarily, there were passable matches, uh, passable to good matches. That people weren't given really a reason to care about going sure. into it, so I think that's what really tamp tampered the mood of the actual audience more than anything. Mm -hmm. Is that you know I really enjoyed Gold Golden Stardust. Crowd didn't fucking care, they, yeah. and why should they? Like it's they didn't give them any reason to really. Hey, I know, Eamon, you were making a case for like you really liked the story that was told with that with that match. I love the story that was told with that match. I wish they would have, you know, just jumped to that story. And, on Golub's to Raw, you know, like, right. like I feel like, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's. I'm gonna make another driving slash traveling pun, but it's not the destination; it's the trip or whatever the metaphor is. And you know, I don't think they could, based on how the matches were built, I think that's what killed it more than anything. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. And we did have. I think that that. Go ahead. That show could have been helped by a more hospitable crowd. Like yeah. you had, there were matches that were okay, but with a hotter crowd or at least a crowd that would have, 
I don't know, made any sort of noise besides dismissive wanking motions and fart sounds would right. have made that at least at least feel bigger, at least feel more important. And it wasn't it. like a dead crowd let's, for, let's, like, oh, for like a particular match. They were dead for everything. Yeah. They were dead for almost the entire yeah, night. Yeah, it was until like, I remember the yeah, but they, you know, even then, I, like, it wasn't as big as it could be. And that's shocking. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, they were dead I, for Triple H and Sting's confrontation. Like, I tuned in and I immediately noticed. Yeah. I was like, there's no crowd noise, like, at all. Like, the, yeah. the Divas match, no, normally with a, a main roster Divas match, yeah, the, the crowd gets quiet. But it was like, Quiet tur, like it was. There's a, there's like a level of like this is the noise level I expect for a divas match, and then there's a level I expect for like a mid card match, and then like a pretty good match, and then there's just some sort of like bonkers Bryant Mania level noise, or at least that like Daniel Bryan Cesaro level run where they each got like a hell of a match with Cena on Raw, which had like good crowd noise, and it was like. Way down here, right below the cryon. So I'm going to bring my hand up just a shade here. Like way down here, there was no noise. And to as we were talking about in the hangout that night, it made the commentary worse. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you had yeah. to listen to it. Because it became more apparent. Yeah. You could like they were trying to build emotion that would normally, with a decent crowd, like sound awesome or at least feel like they're in with the emotion of the crowd and meanwhile you're just like listening to this dead ass crowd and michael cole screaming brian's going to wrestlemania it's like no no he's not it's not in the slightest <laughs> is it possible <laughs> that they didn't mic the crowd properly did they no. get genuinely good no. and loud for any part of it i think they did for the main event combination they definitely did for the main event they were there Rus mm -hmm. Rus Rus Cena was pretty loud yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that too. You can also just tell by the like looking at the actual crowd, like, and, and they were just really just kind of sitting on their hands the whole night. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, was, I, I don't think it was a case of miking or, or any of that issue. It was just a crowd that really didn't want to be there. And the next <laughs> night seemed to be making yeah. up for it because it seemed like that crowd was kind of into everything. To for the most well, part. And, you, and you don't want to sit on your hands all night. Then they go numb. Right. Right. And then, then you're just slapping, you're just slapping dead hands together. It's it a work. giant arena full of people doing the stranger do themselves. Um, <laughs> I, I am now calling Memphis the town of strangers. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so sad. It's so sad that that's the case too. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. It was it was a fine pay per view. Um, I, and that tried to get me up the next day that he started watching it. I was like, yeah, you're not going to be happy about this. It's just a classically yeah. bad WWE pay per view. Uh, with you know real payoffs being even you know maybe the main event and, which too it is it was not their worst pay per view in a long time no no well, absolutely just, not yeah I didn't feel bad for watching it but no. it just there was there was so much stuff that I was like you but it's so it much reminds you why we were so pissed that these were sixty dollar events yeah yeah it that wasn't is, it wasn't yeah. that it was bad it was just bland yeah mm -hmm. yeah so which it is it hard to deliver. Episode. What, yeah, it was, a, it was a raw episode. It was it was uh, maybe a better than raw episode because it didn't have commercials. I don't know, but um, you know, it was yeah. fine. But it, but it was but even I was more excited for most of the talking parts than what we ended up getting with the wrestling, which I thought yeah. were fine. I love the Undertaker uh, bait and switch. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure AJ took like two poops during it. No, I pooped during <laughs> Cena Rusev. Oh, uh, okay, I see. We saw him poop during Cena Rusev. Yeah, you saw him. Not like the actual pooping process. Yeah, but, but, and, yeah. Uh, no, I I would say I I was not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. I was not a fan of the bait and switch. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this Wyatt Taker match. It's gonna go over like a dead fish. Someone, I, I think it was um, Brandon Stroud pointed out how, how weird it is going into Mania. Some of the matches they've set up, like, and, and it's the obvious matches, but like we have like Roman Reigns against like someone like Brock Lesnar, who's you know. Tenure guy. You have Triple H and Sting, whose combined age is like a hundred. You have, uh, you know, Undertaker, where people are questioning, like, is he going to be able to put together a match with Bray Wyatt? And and you have, you know, and, and the way that's coming together, it's like 
there's there was such a period in like a year or so ago where like the undercard of the younger talents really being focused and that doesn't seem to be the case and now we don't know what brian's doing for mayne even like it, it's it's interesting right I, I think that's part of the knee-jerk reaction I think that's the knee-jerk reaction to Reigns, the reaction that Reigns got at Mania or at the Rumble, where Reigns is clearly where they want to go. He's clearly the new, the next super face that they want to set up, and they just they they heard the crowd boo the ever living daylights out of him, and they went, "Let's go back into our shells and go back to whatever what's what served us over the last you know five to seven years." Right. And we'll put guys like Bray Wyatt into a, in, into a match with Taker. That is going to be a squash match. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking forward to that match at all. I, I'm, well, I'm so worried with, of what they're going to be able to do. Like, yeah, Taker's like – apparently there's like photos of like Taker like in the gym and stuff like that, which is cool. But like I, I don't think Bray Wyatt's going to be able to execute on the level that he's normally able to execute mm -hmm. on with somebody like Taker. I want to bring it around to Roman Reigns here, and we're talking about kind of a little bit of the rebuilding there. Uh, do you think Roman Reigns got his second wind as far as the energy, the role into uh, WrestleMania? Uh, did Daniel Bryan do the good job, or did Reigns step up? I, I, I like to say that Reigns had a chip on his shoulder going into this match, and uh, it really kind of pulled it out. It felt like that after Fastlane. Mm -hmm. It felt like that. The problem is they they executed what they did at Fastlane, and I was excited and behind Roman Reigns, and then they again in the buildups, you know, decided, hey, let's give him a microphone and give him a fifteen minute promo. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. the, you know what's gonna get people? Not not to be like all snarky and be like, oh, you can't cut a promo. Like, what is gonna get people behind Roman Reigns? and forget about the Royal Rumble and forget about all that, you know, hate or whatever. It's just have him coming out and beating up guys and being awesome at it. Mm -hmm. That's what gets him over. Yeah, he I think they're he trying is, to... You, go ahead. Uh, I, I think they're trying to do with Roman Reigns what uh, guys like Angle or Eddie Guerrero or Benoit did for Cena back in 05, where they have the young Cena beat these guys that are like technical masterpieces and now we're supposed to believe that oh you know what Roman Reigns just defeated Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan uh, likes this guy so let's get behind him and, and I think that's the thing that a lot of people started to hate Cena for at, at first mm -hmm. but that's not a bad strategy necessarily the thing is you just have to put him in those matches put him in a bunch of matches on Raw you know give him you know guys to work with that will make him look and, and not to you know make him look strong or whatever but make him look strong in a sense that he can be a badass. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's so good at. That's what he was so good at when he was in the shield is being that badass dude. And there's no reason you have to give him a microphone every week. There's yeah, no reason you have to do that. I can't believe they haven't given him a manager yet. Right. I mean, clearly his biggest weakness is his mic work. So take that away from him. Well, you and, know? and to be honest, he's not the worst mic guy either. But who do you give him? Yeah. I mean, the, so that's many, that's the problem many, here. Is that, but the problem is that you, yeah, you could give him anybody, but who do you give him, and how do you make it make sense? Like, you can't give him Heyman because mm -hmm. Heyman's already got Lesnar. There's not really any face uh, managers, so there's to speak. No, there's Here's no the face manager. The only obvious one that I can that we've talked we've talked about this. The only sort of kind of manager that makes sense for Reigns is Ambrose, but. The, they're not on the same path. No, no. But here's they're the not... thing. If, if you need to give him a chance to talk, that's fine. But don't make him cut the promos that every Raw guy has to cut. Yeah. In 15 minutes where they go on and on about stuff. Because that's the part where Roman fails on the mic. is because he slipped over his words and he, you can tell that he's thinking about what he has to say next. Just let him, if you, just let him say one line that makes him sound cool or badass. And then fucking have him be badass. You don't need to give him a fifteen minute promo. Because then his real, you know, issues are gonna show. Well and even like you know, somebody like Ambrose, he doesn't give long promos either. 
No, no, he, he's been very short and to the point, and and has action. I think that's why a lot of people get behind him. It's a fault of the system, and it's a fault of how Monday Night Raw and WWE in general is putting on their shows, right? right. In my opinion, but um, we'll see. I, I we'll see what happens here rolling into uh, Royal Rumble. No, wait, WrestleMania. Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, oh, the Royal <laughs> the Royal WrestleMania uh, coming up. Some pay per view called WrestleMania. Some pay per view. <laughs> Called the WrestleMania. Uh, All right, we got. We've probably got a Cena Rusev rematch. Right. We've got yep. Reigns and Lesnar, which I'm really. I'm actually glad that they're sticking with it. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that they gave oh, yeah. the. I'm glad that they put Brian and, and Reigns in the ring at Fastlane. It bought them a month of not having Reigns talk to Heyman. Um, it gave them the ability to have Brian give. The give the rub to Reigns and show that Reigns can have a baller ass match. I mean, that was a good, was a good wrestling match. Great match. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, I think that was that was a good thing to, to do there. They they're clearly building the Wyatt and Taker and Asky Shrug. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what else they have. I, I think I, I agree that it was forward. good that they went with that. They stuck with the Roman Reigns in the main event because just the precedent that sets for two years in a row, if the fans throw a fit, they can get whoever they want in the main event mm-hmm. as opposed to who the actual writers are putting in the main event. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I don't think that they're wrong for pushing Reigns. I don't think he's necessarily ready. But I don't think they're wrong for pushing Reigns. And There's the problem a way. is that Go ahead. they yeah. can't do what they did. They can't do what they did with Cena, where they they had him beat Show at Mania for the U.S. title. But they can't. They can't have. They can't use mid card titles to help build that guy anymore because they've done nothing but take giant dumps on the mid card titles mm-hmm. for the last at least two years. And how so many? They, they don't have any sort of real, real importance. So they can't say like, Oh, Hey, we're going to put the IC title on reigns at mania. We're going to mm-hmm. give him a, we're going to let him, and we're going to put a mid card title on him just so he has a belt. So we can say that it's important and then have him go on a little run with the IC belt. How many times they do we have, have to have somebody saying, I want to be a uh, IC champion, bring prestige and build it up again before we just don't care about it being built, being built back up. Uh, Garza, I, 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 it has already I, happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Garza, I, I think you were trying to chime in there a moment ago. I was just going to say that I, I agree with, uh, that Lesnar reigns being just the match and no triple threat is the best thing to do. Especially if you're gonna, if Lesnar's living and you're gonna beat the conqueror, it's best to just do it one on one and no like triple threat shenanigans that you pin Daniel Bryan so Lesnar leaves on pin. So it's just best if you, if he's gonna leave, he needs to get pinned. Right, right, exactly. All right. On that note, we'll be talking so much more about WrestleMania and including our takes on it with the Mayhem Mania here later on this show uh, with Matt Carlin's here joining us. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want some wrestling that's uh, not like fast lane uh you can go over pittsburghwrestling.com that's what we have uh, going on around here uh and we got some great stuff going on there uh stuff like the iwc reloaded with somebody like tommy dreamer uh making an impact over there having a match with uh recent uh uh, uh interviewee on the uh, indie mayhem show uh Colin Delaney, for instance. Uh, you can check out uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling's uh, uh, January Jackpot, uh, including, of course, uh, uh, Davey Richards from the from Ring of Water TNA fame, or even a uh, little bit uh, Zach Gowan, uh, the one-legged wrestler in documentary we had a little bit ago, uh, the Finding Zach Gowan. You can find all that stuff over at PittsburghWrestling.com, IWC, RWA, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Prime Wrestling Cuts, including uh, coming soon. Just, just finished the uh, preview edit uh, waiting for some uh, changes see what happens it should be released here in the next few weeks um for uh the the prime cuts for another friend of the show the cm punk approved gregory iron uh, if you know who that is the 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 wrestler with uh, cerebral palsy um and also team teammate in the handicap heroes with uh zach gowan so go check all that stuff out at pittsburghwrestling.com if you sign up to up to the newsletter right there on the right of the site you actually get a free copy of iwc's 100th show including guys like aj styles um all kinds of names all over that show so please go check that out sign up for that you, you can check out everything coming out 
uh, including Sawtooth Willie every once in a while too. Uh, and which that you can check out youtube.com slash sorgatron media as well. Um, so with that, let's talk about the ladies, shall we? Uh, Eamon, you, you posted Ooh, this, you posted this on the Facebook. Um, of course, just a little bit of setup. We did, uh, talk about, or we talked about before, we talked about last night on the, uh, WWE raw wrap up that we do here at wrestling show.com. We had like a 30 second match tag team match. Bella's against Emma and Paige. They had extended entrances, sat through a sting profile with Paige in the ring, and we got sat through, also sat through like many like recap videos of other people's feuds right. throughout the throughout right. the show. And of course, and of course, the uh, hashtag "Give Truth a Chance" got hijacked by everybody and everything. And the biggest probably was "Give Divas a Chance." After that, poor, poor planning and and look that that we got out of that now Eamon, you came across something that happened on the twitters i did uh there's been a lot of talk uh uh the hashtag got got extremely popular uh throughout you know from the end of monday night raw up until this morning uh, it was one of the top uh, trends uh worldwide uh but uh there hasn't been a lot of response from people actually within the company or people within wrestling uh, about it until probably about an hour ago uh, from uh, a certain missing in action diva uh, <laughs> named AJ Lee, who right. uh, had some things to say. Uh, these were actually in a response to a, um, to a tweet that Stephanie McMahon sent out uh, during the Oscars. Uh, it's uh, I can't remember who the famous... I don't watch the Oscars. I apologize. Well, here, uh, 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 but... uh, Patricia, well, well, for those who don't know that side of it, and I only know this because everybody's been talking about it on podcasts since yesterday. Um, right. Patricia Arquette spoke out in her Oscar speech about uh, equal pay for people working in that industry, in the Hollywood industry, uh, after you know all this time in Hollywood paying God knows what to people, and still women are lower waged. And and not as prominently featured in the ways that they probably should be in that yeah. industry. And gee, doesn't that sound like something like pro wrestling? And the tweet, that the, sounds a lot like pro the tweet originally is thank you, uh, Pat, at Patty Arquette is her twi- Twitter mm-hmm. uh, for having the courage to fight for hashtag women's rights on such a grand platform. Hashtag use your voice. Now, do you have the tweet in front of you here, Eamon? I do. Okay. Uh, and like I said, this was actually like literally about an hour ago. Uh, AJ tweeted Stephanie McMahon saying, quote, your female wrestlers have record selling merchandise and have starred in the highest rated segments on the show several times. And that's the first part of the tweet she follows. And yet they receive a fraction of the wages and screen time of the majority of the male roster. Hashtag use your voice. So, yeah, um, obviously, assumedly, things between AJ Lee and the WWE are probably pretty rocky at this point. Mm-hmm. Um based off of uh, the stuff that's happening with her husband currently. Um, Which is CM Punk, for those that don't know, who there's a lo- there is a lawsuit pending with the doctor from WWE and WWE putting on the front page the proof from WrestleMania that he didn't have staph infection, as he claimed. CM Punk butt. CM, CM Punk, Punk butt. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the gen. Yes. Um, yes. But yeah. <laughs> This is interesting because it goes beyond the whole idea of giving divas time or, or, you know, all that stuff, which I still firmly agree is an issue. But it's also for a fact that AJ is basically uh, throwing out there that, you know, the whole idea of equal pay, uh, both from the fact that, uh, you know, divas are high merchandise sellers and they're in the highest rated segments on the show. That last part kind of sounds very similar to when we were talking about the TNA knockouts, not getting paid jack shit even though they were the highest rated segments of impact. The Divas champion getting caught at a, working at a sunglass hut. Yep. Not Divas. Yeah. Obviously, it's not that I think free, a, but... AJ? I, I think the big issue here is the fact that Stephanie McMahon is retweeting the user voice and, and retweeting the, the message of a Hollywood star doing a effectively her own public service announcement during her Oscar awards or her Oscar award acceptance speech. And then AJ calling her out on effectively the, the, the double standard here, like, Oh yeah, we really want to support women's rights. And then AJ goes, you're not actually doing that with your own people that you actually have the control and power over. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, 
and she's not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that. And one of the things I do appreciate about NXT is that they are giving the women time. They're giving women storylines, the women's title in NXT. They had a baller match at TakeOver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing, it, it, it plays into what they're doing on – it plays up to what they're doing on the main roster. But I think part of the issue is that I, I, I imagine the WWE would come back and say, we promote the hell out of a show that is just our female wrestlers on E, which none of our other wrestlers have. None of the male wrestlers have a – there's no, like, following dudes in spandex on E. But also, and, and I can't remember. Um, I, I can't remember if we mentioned this. Be a show on. Go I ahead. I can't remember ahead, if Amy. we had mentioned this before, but um, uh, a lot of stuff that's really spurring this conversation was uh, comments made by the Bella Twins, actually, uh, from uh, Comic Con in Indianapolis, where they talked about. I think someone asked them a question around those lines, and Brie Bella was like, "Yeah." You know, if I was on NXT, I wouldn't want to come up to the main roster because I get time up there. You know, and they basically said, "Really, you have a three-hour show and you can't give us more than three minutes." Mm -hmm. And that's that's one, the divas champion of the company currently, and two, the other person that's one of the more prominent women on the show right now, saying those kind of things. Right. Um, I, I think that really sticks out. And and that's the thing with this whole give divas a chance thing. It's not an issue of I I love, I think women's wrestling should be you know very prominent and and, it's, and the thing that people get behind. Um, but it's not an issue of models versus wrestlers. It's an issue of people who are on your roster that you are paying to do a job, giving them the opportunity to do that job to the best of their abilities. Right. And I'm sure that people like Natalia and Paige and Emma want that time just as much as people like the Bella Twins and Summer Rae and Naomi and Alicia Fox and all those people that weren't wrestlers going into it but have spent the time and done the bumps and done the training to be wrestlers. And, and to be fair, there there are points where, well, take the brass ring, do whatever, and I think in the case of, oh, geez, Trinity, Naomi? Naomi, yes. I got it right! I got it right the one week! Um... And uh, and uh, Natty really doing that when they had their mixed tag match last week, and even you know what they're doing at ringside with the with the with the guys this week. Um, but you, then again, also how much time did they get in that mixed tag? That's right. But again, you don't have a top opportunity to grab the brass ring when you have thirty seconds. You know, and it's just, it's just, uh, and it's like, like I, I know there, this is, could be an isolated incident where something ran long and they're like, okay, do it in 30 seconds. Like maybe they just got the, do it in 30 really seconds, which, been an isolated could, incident. which could happen, which could have been the case in this case, but this is not an isolated incident. And it seems like they're always on the chopping block. If that is the case, the divas are always the first one to get the time state. And if, if it's a case that their time's being taken down, even yeah, they're always the ones that get their time taken down. I mean, and, and that's ridiculous. And I mean, like we see like on Total Divas, like Natty has her fans, you know, Bellas have their fans that come out to these signings. And I think about Jen Carlin's reaction when Gene Ambrose comes out for a whole minute last night. Right. Uh, how underserved are these fans? I guess they have Total Divas now, at least. But think, think of how many people are probably watching Total Divas that don't aren't regular professional wrestling fans. That's true, too. That maybe do look up to them. You know, I, I, I'm not someone that looks up to reality TV stars, but there are people like that out there that would want to see them wrestle and, and be these powerful people that they try to portray them as on the on the reality show. And then they turn into Raw and they get a 30 second match. Right, right. Hey, good point from the chat room. Actually, from Riz. He actually got his right name on here now. Uh, he says, Nikki Bella has her earned her way up there. Even though she is with Cena, she has been impressive for the entire year. Both the Bellas have. Right? Both you, the Bellas. You can't. I mean, I think, I think before this year, I would have just seen them as the model wrestlers, right? Um, and we would groan every time they came out for the longest, 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 longest time, right? Um, They've been in WWE for, what, like eight years at this point? I mean, they were off for like a year because they had gotten released at one point and came back. But yeah, yeah. right. Um, they've earned their keep. Like I, 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 you know, 
certainly. And I have, I have a lot of respect for it. And then they're, they're having the, the, the merch numbers that they have is, is tremendous. It's tr- definitely tremendous. But uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, what is Paige, Paige, you know, what opportunities has Paige had since she's been up from NXT? Um, it feels like some of the commentary I've seen is like, oh, Paige grown, you know? Uh, but it's like, no, Paige was having amazing matches, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, in, in, in the takeovers, in, w, in, in NXT in general, and she was brought up. And then again, then what, you know? Same with Emma was was actually pretty impressive too. Um, it comes I'm, to an issue of focus. What happens when Charlotte comes up? I think that's going to be a true test because that is going to be the first girl that comes up, and not, not even the first girl. Paige was a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous NXT wrestler, and and what is she doing? Yeah, so, I'm going to say when Charlotte comes up, whatever happens is not going to make us happy. No, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hopeful wistful. that it's going to be anything good. And it's going to come to that point where it's going to be, oh no, they're coming to the main roster. Mm-hmm. It's it's gonna be. Well, we it's, talked about that on the big question the other day. Like, yeah. what what can they do to bring up NXT people and make them interesting? You know, right, right. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But but that's the case. Is I think for women it's even harder. Mm-hmm. I, I think for men you you have a, a bit more of a fighting chance. You know, I I hope I hope that we've brought a lot of insight. Being our um um big massive boner panel of <laughs> with uh, giant, of male with feminists, we are, um, obviously are very experienced. I, yeah, I mean, we know we know about the plight of the female and uh, our yeah general yeah non diverse at all panel. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, but I mean, it came up. We had to talk about it. So, um, so with that, you know, you know, one thing I can talk about that I am uh, an expert on is pizza. We like the pizza around we here. Like pizza. We do like the pizza. We like to be able to feed our guests here when they come into the Mayhem Studio. We had a lot of great guests in studio and, and co-hosts and everything uh, coming in lately. Uh, Rambling Movie Minute, awesome cast. You know, it's around dinner time when we do that stuff. And I want to make sure they're not going hungry. You got to make sure they're fueled for the conversation, right, guys? Right, LB. Yep. Thank you, LB. Oh, uh, man. So sir. much. I mean, they even send me pizza all the way on the other side of Pittsburgh. That's just right. Just because they know sir. I'm on the show. We are getting on that sir. slice on Broadway to do the pizza delivery system to California for Ant- Alex Carr's, whatever his name is out there. Uh, you know, and yeah, for Mad Mike, him somehow for Mad Mike in New York. And if sir, can... did I hear you say you were an authority on pizza? Oh, what is that voice? What is that that what is that upstate New York voice I just heard? It's why it is that one and only Mad Mike. Sorg. No. If there is an authority on pizza on this show, it is the New Yorker. That's right. And let me tell you something about pizza. <laughs> this is Lent. This is Lent. Do you know what you have to do on Fridays in Lent, Sorg? You have to not eat meat. Not you know eat what that meat. means? That meant pizza day at my grandparents' house, that's for sure. That that means a heck of a lot of cheese pizza, Sorg. Mm-hmm. And do you want to know how good Slice on Broadway is? It's so good. It's Kevin McAllister approved. Right. It and is? you know you can know we, him. Can we say that? That kid rented a limo, and all he wanted in that limo was just a large cheese pizza just for him. Oh. And you know what? I bet he got it delivered from Slice. They didn't say it in the movie, but it looked like Slice on Broadway. No, they did not tell us to read this, obviously, at Slice mm-hmm. on Broadway. Uh, mm-hmm. But but I think they're going to have to run with that. Kevin McAllister approved. Lent friendly. And actually... Mm-hmm. Um, gluten- and then you know what? When Lent's over, best part, best part, you can go right back there. You can get pizza with meat on it. Mm, and they got Slaughterhouse 5, get that big time. Big time. Or you could ignore everything about religion and get yourself a meaty pizza on the of the week. Thank you, Slice on Broadway, and thank you, AJ, for the new theme song for SliceOnBroadway.com. Not officially supported or uh, approved of by Slice on Broadway. The thoughts and opinions on pizza and pizza-related things are those of the Wrestling Mayhem Show and Sorgatron Media. Uh, but you can check it out and check it out for yourself. A uh, uh, great uh, pizza-supporting podcast in Pittsburgh on SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out. Let them know the Mayhem Show sent you and is singing about them on on uh, at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and slice on broadway look for them on facebook and instagram with that hey guys we'll be right back 
with the big question. Hey, this is Tim Dobbs. I heard somebody wants to interview me. You better get back to me ASAP. AIW Chicago this weekend. You want to talk to me, I want to talk to you. BDK. And we're back, and it's time for the big question, in which I handed to pop a lunchbox to expand our minds. Yes, that's true. We're going to expand the mind. We're going to grab either end of it and just pull and pull and pull until we hear our weird, deepest, darkest wrestling thoughts. This week on The Big Question, uh, I was inspired by Monday Night Raw with the announcement that the Bushwhackers are being um, inducted. And that sparked a very heated debate in our weird little uh, hangout because some people were happy that the Bushwhackers are being inducted and other people are not happy that the Bushwhackers are being inducted. And uh, basically the question for this week is the WWE Hall of Fame is such a thing with the big announcements before WrestleMania every year is such a thing sustainable in the long term? Like yes. just just in general? In general. Will they eventually just run out of interesting acts to induct? Uh, I, I think uh, on if we're going to mm-hmm. quote the wonderful John Syracuse, on an infinite time scale, yeah, they're going to run out of people. But I, I don't think that they're going to run out anytime soon. Consider what, what, the fact that... What, right, what well, big I, name is going to be inducted in 10 years? Cena. Yeah, the people now. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, the I mean, people who are in there now. Let's say, hey, listen, CM Punk pulls the stick out of his ass, he goes into the hall. Mm-hmm. Let's, I mean, honestly, if he like the fact that Randy Savage is only going in now tells me that there's like, hey, listen, there, CM Punk will hold some beef. Brock Lesnar will go in. Kane will go in. Taker will go in. Cena will go in. Mark Henry will go in. Big Show will go in. I mean, there's Mark like Henry a whole... will, like Mark Henry will go in. Yeah, Mark Henry. Yeah, I don't know. yeah Mark Henry's going. In. Are you kidding? Career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Absolutely. He's right. It doesn't they seem like it. Amen, Amen. Here's the difference. It doesn't seem like it because you've actually experienced his career. As opposed to everybody else. As opposed oh, to just, everybody I, I else. Bushwhackers were great back in the day. Hey, hey, they hey, were. hey, 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 hey. They were. Hey, hey. There's, there's no actual. Let's, let's consider this. There is no actual like set of metrics or numbers or whatever. But Coco Beware is in the Hall of Fame. The fuck did Coco Beware actually do? Nothing other than be Coco Beware, and he was on that album that one time, and he had a parrot on his shoulder. Mark Henry goes in the goddamn Hall of Fame. That's not a question, right? Like they, they will put Mark Henry in. There is a list of people now who we are all watching right now. Orton goes in. Mm-hmm. Batista goes in. Mm-hmm. Like, Triple H. A, Triple H. Whenever oh, he decides, hell, Triple Vince. H. No, no, no. Vince no. and Stephanie both go in. Vince goes Vince. in when he dies. Yes. Jeff goes in when he dies. Which Triple I mean, H, Triple H will follow in Vince's in Vince's path, where Vince could very easily right now tomorrow say, "I want to be in the Hall of Fame, damn it!" and and he could just go in. Okay, but um, he's not going to. Mm-hmm. He's not going to go in until he dies. And Triple H and Stephanie will likely do the same thing. They will not go into the Hall until they are done with the WWE, which is never. So they will never actually go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mad Mike, uh, what what do you think about the sustainability of the Hall of Fame? I think uh, first, like I think they'll obviously still they'll have plenty of people to put into the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they can induct fewer people per year. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't think I don't think you have to have six to seven people every year. Like you save the bigger number Hall of Fame class. For like your five year and your like five year WrestleManias or your ten year WrestleManias, like WrestleMania thirty, you're supposed to have a big class. WrestleMania thirty one, you can have three to four people go in and everyone will be okay with it. You have yeah, one celebrity, one celebrity, three wrestlers. Celebrities, you will never run out of with WWE because all you need to do is fart in a WWE ring and they will put you in the Hall of Fame. Hugh Jackman will eventually be in there. This yes. is a guarantee. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, and honestly, I think once more and more people let go of some of their issues or you let go of personal demons that have happened, like uh, the British Bulldogs deserve to go in. Like, Owen whenever um, Owen Hart's widow comes around, he will go into the Hall of Fame. Right. There are there are people who have mitigating circumstances. That's why Macho Man took this long. Right. Like it'll it'll happen for all the guys that were missing eventually. I mean, you still like we've never inducted a referee. Oh wow. I mean, I know there have been some some shit with the Hebners in the past, but Earl Hebner I think deserves to go in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Joey Morella deserves to go in the Hall of Fame. Earl Hebner will go in the Hall of Fame, and then he'll sell his ring out of the boot of his car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he will. But you know what? He'll be in the Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> but, like, Nick Patrick. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Nick Patrick, Hall of Fame. Uh, who is the one? Uh, uh, Curtis. Mark Curtis? Uh, yeah, Mark Curtis. Mark Curtis Hell, should. Teddy Long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, we haven't even started to induct any referees. You could say... And the only ring announcer well, that's in there is Howard Finkel. Pat Patterson. Uh, mean Gene. Oh, yeah, Mean Gene's, mean in, Gene's in there. Yeah. Uh, Pat Patterson's technically a referee. You say he's at WrestleMania, you know. Yeah, you know. Where's Muhammad Ali for the celebrity one, right? You know. Um, I thought he was already in. He might be. Okay, you're right. You're right. Uh, Anyways, uh, what do you think, Garza? Uh, building on what Mike was saying, I, I don't think they'll ever like run out because the the quality may get lower because eventually people like Maria Menounos uh, is going to get in. Zack Ryder is going to get in. And even then, if, if you run out of those, you still have the old territories with, with that Vince Senior used to have. You having uh, internationals bring in, and there's also had some years ago. Nope. Like these matching matches mm -hmm. to the Hall of Fame, so they'll always have something to induct. That's right. It's a it's a long history, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have been through there. And they're not all going to be macho man. So some of them will be bushwhackers. Um, and the newer and newer inductees that we get, it's like you said, sword. Like you were joking with Eamon, but if we've seen their whole career, or at least eighty percent of their career in WWE, mm -hmm. it may just seem less important because, yeah. oh yeah, obviously the outlaws are going to go in. We've seen their entire run, but obviously they're going to go in. Right. Exactly. Like exactly. Christian, gonna go into the Hall of Fame. Trish Stratus is already in. Lita is in. That's yeah. crazy. That seems crazy. They seem way too young. It's one thing Eddie haven't been somebody that passed, but well, some of these guys. But Trish and Lita have officially retired. That's true too. That's true too. Like they, they like Trish has gone on to become a mom and all that stuff, and that and you know, perfectly fine. Right. But that's the that's the reason that she went in so Alright, I want well, to touch, even, on, touch even, on even someone like even someone like Edge. Like Edge is already in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But again, somebody like, retired. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Somebody retired, then cash on the name value while I was still fresh. Uh, I want to make sure we touch on everybody here. Uh, uh, Matt Carlins, are you, do you have a response to the sustainability of the Hall of Fame here? Uh, I think uh, looking backwards, uh, if you look at some of those Hall of Fame classes that they had, maybe maybe there was like a three or four year run um, a couple, three or four years ago. That sounds weird. Um, anyway, the point is, some of those Hall of Fame classes were way too stacked to the point where they were like overshadowing guys who could have headlined classes mm -hmm. um, by making them, you know, second bananas to some other guys. Um, so I think that was the problem for a while, and I kind of understand why they had to do it. They kind of had to build up the Hall of Fame brand and make it into a thing that. Fans would get excited about and want to sell out, sell out an arena to watch old wrestlers share war stories. Um, so they had to build up the brand, and now that it's built, I think they are kind of stuck, looking around, kind of wondering, okay, who do we induct now? Um, but at the same time, they've got a lot of big names still left. I mean, isn't The Rock still out yeah. there? He's the not been inducted yet either. And you got um, Sting and Undertaker. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think they'll always have the big name to go in the problem they're going to run into is like fleshing out the rest of the class. They're going to have a hard time though. I think they'll never have a problem finding a headliner, finding a celebrity to induct. But I think, you know, those deep cuts that you're looking for, um, where in the past they would induct like Tito Santana and you'd be like, all right, good for Tito. Mm -hmm. Now you get the bushwhackers and you're like, what the, f 
um, LB, L- L- LB, uh, do you do you want to uh, chime in here on your thoughts? Um, I I think that it does have a, a long lifespan left to it, but um, I think I don't think it's sustainable in the in that eventually you're going to run out of people that people give a shit. You know what I mean? You are going to be scraping the bottom of the barrel and just like, oh God, who can we induct this year? You know, you're going to put all your headliners in, and then you're gonna they're going to find their hands empty and like, yeah, we could we can induct you know this person who was on WWE jacked for a while, but nobody's going to want to watch that. Maybe they'll still induct people, but they won't televise it. Mm-hmm. But um, I I think that the longer the Hall of Fame goes on, the less important it will be. You know, as a takeoff on that, it, 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 yes, it'll always go on. It could become smaller. Maybe we're not filling Master Square Garden anymore, but we're filling or whatever arena Raw is going to be on on Monday. But but it's a smaller venue. Maybe they ran out of theater at this point. Maybe they don't have all the crowd in there, but it's still something to do, and it's content for their network, and that becomes a reason to do it, right? Um, I mean, how well, long? I think when, I think how long was it not? Fame. How long was it not televised, for instance? But I think, I think also on top of that, when you're talking about, and you know, I have a problem when we kind of bash the undercard of the Hall of Fame and saying these guys. And this, I talked about this a little bit on the Mayhem Minute today. You know, guys like the Bushwhackers, who I really dig. I'm a really big fan of. Here they are. <clears throat> I have guys on video, for instance. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, these guys. And I know we didn't see much of it. I know all we got to see was Rikishi dancing as Rikishi. I know all we got to see is a little bit of the Bushwhackers licking heads. You wonder, why was that important? And yes, those are people that have longer careers and more important ones. Rikishi is part of pretty much wrestling uh, royalty family, you know? And, and I think that's very, very important. Um, and I think there's just contributions. And we got to also remember their, their consideration is this is sports entertainment. These guys licking people's heads. I had this brought up, and I, I love the, 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 the old, uh, my good old friend uh, uh, hit me up on Facebook. Is like, I remember them licking my head and, and them asking me, you know, is my name Ron or Ronald? And is my mom going to get mad? When, or something about like when when his mom gets mad, is they call him Ronald, and then they licked his head. You know, I mean that craziness, right? And that was a memory. And to him, the Hall of Fame for these guys is the greatest thing because they entertained some little kid who's now like thirty something and is still reckoning back to that. And that's going to be the thing that resonates with him when they get announced for the Hall of Fame. Um, so, uh, Zach Ryder is going to resonate with somebody ten years from now. When he's on the other card of the Hall of Fame. And in the long run, guys, I, I go back to this is a fake Hall of Fame for a fake sport. This is like this is like recognizing this is like recognizing with the gold watch the guy that's worked for your company for the longest time, right? The the uh, empty certificate of, uh, of 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 company recognition. Um, they just turn it into a show, you know. And plus, it's not really for us. No, absolutely not. It's for the wrestlers. Like, right. it's, like I'm sure as many people that don't care about the Bushwhackers, when they called Luke and Butch and said, hey, we'd like you guys to be in the Hall of Fame, that probably made their world. Mm-hmm. Like, the, because that, whether or not it's a fake sport, that is recognition for a body of work that you are presumably proud of. Yeah. Which and it's not about titles. It's not about anything else. I, I was saying today on the on the other show, whether you know who deserves and has not had a title and has not done anything significant, say in the ring, in years, uh, if maybe ever you could argue, Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, should be in. Barry there. Horowitz. Barry Horowitz should be in. Barry there. Horowitz, perennial loser. Barry Horowitz should be in the Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> Right. And uh, I mean, it just uh, you like I think I think there's going to be like they will flesh it out with, you know, we've mentioned, you know, sometimes they will have people that are like, I don't have no idea who that is. Does not need to be somebody who contributed to WWE in particular. We've had plenty of those. We've had promoters that Vince shut down, inducted (laughs) into the Hall of Fame, for instance. You know, it doesn't matter. They were a contribution to wrestling and that gets identified. And they get to do something, and you know, and these guys get paid. By the way, like this isn't just you show up and get a ring. You, you get you get a nice paycheck when you get this. Stuff. And sometimes when when Vince brings in an old promoter, that old promoter sells his library of videos. That's right. Vince. That's kind of a thank you. Here's a ring for selling us your mm-hmm. stuff. 
So it's it's gonna... Carter 2016. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like to. I would like to add, then ask a, an additional large, large question. Okay. There are, there are Uh-oh. multiple professional wrestling hall of there. There's the WWE Hall of Fame that we that we're talking about right now. Right. There's also an actual professional wrestling hall of fame. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. This year, they have announced their uh, they have announced their their inductees. The Pioneer Era is. Joe Mousewitz and Great Gamma. Uh, the television era is Pedro Morales and Whipper Billy Watson. The modern era is Kurt Henning and Rick Martel. Ladies is Vivian Vachon. The tag team is the Fabulous Freebirds. The colleague is Jim Crockett Sr. And the international inductee is Tomomi Jumbo Saruda. I, I appreciate that, and I've I've seen these lists before from the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. They have like a they have like a set group each year. So they have like a, before 1946 is the Pioneer Era. The Television Era is 43 to 84, and then Modern Era is 85 to present. They pick two people from each of those. They have one ladies inductee, one tag team inductee, one colleague, which is usually a promoter, and they have somebody internationally. Which one seems to make more sense here? Because I think this one is more neutral. I'm sure that there's somebody behind it and everybody gets real mad that that person still has beef with other people, but there's not the direct Vince McMahon doesn't like you or you don't like Vince McMahon and that's why you're not in such and such Hall of Fame, whereas these guys are more brand neutral or promotion neutral plus this is like a non it's just interesting to this, yeah this it. is this is like a non-profit in comparison i mean this is like hey and i've heard about this and i've heard of stories from some of the guys here locally talking about you know going up to it like like Zor- lord zoltan and stuff um like it's it's yeah it's something completely different it, it's it, it is neutral it, it's just a a group that kind of started this up um but uh senator hugh farley award Oh, that's interesting. It looks like a senator in New York is actually involved, but that makes sense. That's in New York, uh, Amsterdam, New York, to be pre- uh, uh, precise. Um, because I mean, well, you know, look at Mass Square Garden, right? So it's a big mecca of that, and they have it, it, you know the names. A lot of people don't know the names you mentioned, but you look at the headliner, the headline here. I mean, it's across the top. You have um, 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 Harley Race, and you have. Uh, 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 J.J. Dillon, Animal Steel, Terry Funk, right? Uh, Mr. Perfect's in here, class of 2015, uh, as you mentioned. Um, you know, it, Lord Alfred Hayes from 2014. Like, this is the rest of it, and this is other people that contributed. Again, not the way Mr. Wrestling 2 is in this, you know. Um, but again, recognition. And uh, this is the one that's not with the big paycheck, like we talk about with WWE. So, anyways, let us know what you think. Uh, the question of the week. This will be around on the tweets. Use the hashtag uh, WMS Big Question and let us know: Can the WWE Hall of Fame be sustainable and still feel big for a long time? Um, and this week, you have the opportunity to win a digital download from PittsburghWrestling.com: The Best of AJ Styles in IWC Volume Two. Uh, this was released from uh, earlier last year. And uh, let's see, uh, on this one, um, you you can see AJ Styles take on Christopher Daniels from all the way back in 2005. Uh, uh, Chris Sabin, the first time he took on Matt Hardy, when Matt Hardy was kind of sort of maybe under contract with WWE uh, back in 2005. Samoa Joe is on here, um, and uh, uh, a couple times actually Samoa Joe, and uh, some really, really great stuff. Uh, but no, hashtag WMS big question. Last week, our question was, what should WWE give up for Lent? Lent. Not Lent. Lent. Um, some of our answers from Steve-O Explosion says, simple answer, it's Roman Reigns. <laughs> Another one from The Wrestling Revolution. Hmm? What? That's just now. This guy, should you read this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but apparently yours was, what should they give up? Uh, for Vince not to talk to the announcers table for 40 days. <laughs> you want to ex- expound on that a little bit? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I was say, do you want to, uh, I was going to say, do you want to expand on that a little bit? No, yeah. I was just saying, uh, 
forbid to not be on the micro on the headset of Michael Cole for forty days and just let them run by themselves. See what happens, right? I don't know. Yeah. Would it be better or worse? I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. It could be even more of a train wreck. You don't really know. Um, but uh, either way, Steve Explosion and the Wrestling Revolution is going to get a copy digitally of the RWA Best of 2013, including a lot of friends of the show on that. Some good stuff. So with that, hey, check out um, our friends at ProWrestlingTees.com. My link links aren't working. I don't know if I can show this off. Uh, but you can check out some great designs from great Alex Cars that joined us last week here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, great stuff, uh, including uh, d- designs, good times, the Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, times. property at WMS. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, if I can pull it up real quick. There is a CM Punk-inspired t-shirt going around. Let's see if I can snag that. Uh, you know, uh, CM Punk's uh, first uh, issue of uh, Thor, the Thor annual uh, that he apparently wrote, is going to be coming out, uh, uh, coming very, very soon if it's not already out there. And to Tomorrow. commemorate it's that, this Wednesday. it's this Wednesday. Thank you, panelrive.com. Um, there is actually a punk Thor mashup shirt you can check out. That's sweet. That is pretty, pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> and I can almost guarantee you, Punk is going to get a bigger cut of this shirt than he would have through WWE, and okay. a lot more than he's getting from WWE now. That's for sure. So help him out and pay for those lawyer bills. Buy a CM Punk shirt, but first start at prowrestlingtees.com/slash WMS. So it's time for oh I almost skipped one I almost skipped one um so Mr Mr Mad Mike it's time for you to let me know why should I care even the littlest bit about Impact Wrestling? Can that be, a, can that be the official name of the segment? <laughs> <laughs> I can't fit that on the title. Damn it, Sorg. I don't even have a good reason this week. All right, sighing. Check. I really, I really don't. I, um, they had a they had a twenty man Royal Rumble type of thing. Hmm. Um, you know what? You know when we watch Royal Rumble every year, one of the best parts of the Rumble is you don't know who's going to come out when, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, right. That, yeah. That, that, yeah. Um. So TNA had a twenty man Royal Rumble, and um. They tell us the last five guys. <laughs> then, if you go to Dixie Carter's Twitter at the top of the show, she tells you the first five guys. You tell us half of the entrance in the Rumble. Like I, I mean, also, I just also like that, that, that's interesting. Why Dixie Carter's Twitter? Like, why not the Impact Wrestling Twitter? Why are we promoting Dix- trying to bring traffic to Dixie Carter's Twitter instead of your own? Twitter? Because Dixie Carter needs to feel important. Because Dixie and, Carter is the she's only gonna one not going anywhere. She's going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016. <laughs> that bump. When she sells um, the tape lo- library so we can see what Sting did for uh, 10 years? <laughs> they won't show that. <laughs> uh, they won't show any of that sort. Um, but yeah, so they're giving us MVP versus Lashley next week. Uh, yay. I guess Lashley's already beaten him. I don't know where the drama is in that. But um, EC3, who is probably still one of the most over guys in the company, was in the Royal Rumble for less than 60 seconds. Less than 60 seconds. Oh, so it's like the real Royal Rumble. No, no, no. Well, he never even got that far in the real Royal Rumble. Um, But I... Like, they're not even trying to keep... Like, the Grado thing happened. Um, like yeah, it turns were... out TNA uh, decides to film a segment using copyrighted music without permission, intended to air for television, and then tries to get a movement started like, hey, please let us use this thing we filmed. Instead, they had the Surge Carter-produced karaoke version of Like a Prayer. And I still didn't care because that they still did not give a package as to who this guy is. We didn't know anything about him, and they shook hands afterwards. And after they leave Europe, we'll never see him again. And oh yeah, Tyrus guy's head shaved, which he already had kind of fucked up hair to begin with, so no huge loss. Hmm. Yeah, 
So Impact. Impact Wrestling, full of meh. We can move on from there. Oh, God, yeah. Let's get to <laughs> something we care about. It's Mayhem Mania. And, of course, uh, we'll pull up. Uh, Matt, wake up. Oh, no. Oh, no. We lost Matt again. We lost Matt again. Uh -oh. Hold on. Matt, you're there with the board. Hey. Hey. Uh, how long was I out? Uh, let's see. We talked about, about Impact. a minute of Impact. Yes. Did, um, did Madonna win the Divas title? Yes. Yes. So it wasn't a dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Sword? Scott. Was that your Bobby F. J. Town impression? <laughs> no, if it was his Bobby F. J. Town impression, he would have said Calculon's back. Oh. Uh, Where can I put Mayhem Mania? Mayhem Mania. <laughs> welcome to Mayhem Mania. It's kind of a competitive thought experiment where we create the best WrestleMania card possible using only wit and shenanigans. Mm hmm. We have eight matches here on the table. We've got six people who will make one move to change this card, either by swapping out one wrestler for another, getting rid of one match for another, trading guys in between matches. You'll see. Most of these guys know the score. It's lots mm -hmm. of fun. Mm -hmm. Where was I? Let's recap the card, Sorg. Let me stress to everyone, first and foremost, we are not trying to predict what WWE is going to do. So as much as that WrestleMania, that terrible WWE machine that LB is always talking about, as much as that terrible machine and the inertia is driving you toward, toward certain things and certain decisions, I want you to fight it. Fight that WrestleMania card because you're making your own WrestleMania card. We're making a Mayhem Mania card, a better WrestleMania card, the WrestleMania card you deserve. And here's what we got. Uh, first, let's take let's all celebrate the uh, the match that graduated mm -hmm. uh, to permanence. The Miz versus Damian Miz now, which will not be happening anymore. at WrestleMania. Hey. <laughs> that will not be happening at this year's WrestleMania. But it should. It should have. And here's the rest of the eight. Here's the eight <laughs> matches that we have after last week's round. Hideo with Tommy versus Daniel Bryan. Triple H versus Sting. John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Rock. Charlotte, Char Char, as I like to call her, versus oh. Sasha Banks. I can't believe you guys talked for that. <laughs> Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. The Usos versus Kid and Cesaro versus The Big Show and Kane versus Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins in a four way tag team match. Gold <laughs> Dust versus Stardust. Hold on, Hold on pause. Wait, just one more. Pause, pause. Can you run that? Sure, I will. Be happy to, uh, AJ. Let me just mention real quick here at the bottom, Finn Balor versus Trey Wyatt. Now, this one here, you might be wondering, what the hell happened? Well, the Usos versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro versus The Big Show and Kane versus Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Any questions, AJ? Wow. Uh, no, that was the one. I just needed to hear that one again. Right, Let it go. sink in. <laughs> and of course, Let that the, percolate oh. for just a minute. Oh, I have a rule for this week. Uh-oh. I have a rule for this week. It's kind of a punishment, but you guys probably won't mind too much. But last week, like, all of you guys were picking NXT guys. And, you know, I love NXT guys, too. But, dude, be serious, all right? No NXT guys this week. No, no, no. NXT guys this Daddy, week. No. Bring me an NXT guy no. and you'll be gone. Damn it. I was going to replace The Rock with CJ Parker so quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no Mojo Raleigh. Either. No, no, no. Save your no. move for next week. It's only a one week ban. Wow. You guys need to be also, cool. to be cooled the F off. Also, Matt Carter. What's his name? Put a Hideo Atami into the match. I was like, we're not doing NXT, guys. Okay, uh, Matt Carlin. Are any of these matches after this round of voting, would they advance to uh, permanent spots? I kind of like to keep that secret so it could be a surprise, but since you asked, I'll tell you. Um, you you can't even a secret. None of these even... matches are going to graduate if okay, they survive fine. this week. Okay. These are yeah. all so fresh. The, the most some of these have been on here is like for like a round, so they got to get going. If they survive three rounds, they graduate to permanence. 
the super card, if you will. Wow. Let's get down to business. All right. Mad Mike, you're up. <laughs> yeah, Mad Mike, you're up. Sorgatron is on the deck. All right. I am changing a match. I am re I am taking one match out and replacing it with another. Okay. Very good. I am taking out Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor. Aww. Are you doing that because the pr the intros would last six times longer than the match itself? Oh, no, because I feel AJ's going to be eating a lot of wings in WrestleMania, and he needs his Undertaker shit break, and the Undertaker right, is not booked for this card. So we're going to uh, have the Undertaker uh, versus Sheamus. Oh, I'm wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a ghost versus a ghost. Yes. Oh, you kind of screwed, screwed me up there. Huh. I can't. I can't. I can't swap. Nice to see Sheamus on the card. I can't mm -hmm. swap wrestler for wrestler, can I? Like, like yeah. from match to match. Sure you can. Like yeah, I can. Yeah. Like I can flip like, two matches, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can have up two matches at the same time, Sorg. Yeah, I know you guys the are. Swap, the I'm, swap is uh, is definitely okay. I I, um, I kind of want. And you're on deck. Oh man, because I was going to. I was going to completely just uh, just go ahead and make Sting and Undertaker happen, uh, <laughs> just for the hell of it. Because I just like Let's as do much because I like as much black in my uh, in my wrestling match at WrestleMania as possible. So, um, ah man, uh, but that, apparently that... from the from the chat room, uh, Riz is saying. Fuck you, fuck you hard. Oh, I feel sick. I feel really sick. <laughs> but then, then we're gonna get Triple H. So Riz is, loves my match. So because then we're gonna get like Sheamus versus Triple H. If I can do a swapperoo there, yeah. So hey, WrestleMania twenty six rematch. Why and, not? But I kind of like the idea. What it was Taker and Sheamus, right? Like, mm -hmm. So now yeah, I just want to Sheamus. Now I just want to do something damaging to to Sting and Triple H just for the hell of it. Um, <laughs> How, uh, mm, okay, so somebody who could potentially come back, uh, the guy I think about is going to be a long shot because I don't think he can officially, officially come back, but I feel like it's inevitable one day. <laughs> is, does that count? <laughs> uh, within the realm of reality, if it gets too controversial, we'll let the panel vote. Is Stone Cold Steve Austin controversial? Yes. Um, okay. Sorg, how no. about Randy Orton? No, no, I'm not picking Randy Orton for anything. Let's be. Wait, no. wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just saying he's not on the card. That's all. Wait, wait, hold, hold on. Let's put it to a voice vote. Do you guys believe Stone Cold Steve Austin is within the realm of reality? No. no. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that's, 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 that's Flair really and Shawn Michaels on the card at one point. <laughs> that's true. They're, that's true. They're able-bodied. That is true. Rick we're Flair not sure is about, always a possibility. We're not sure about Stone Cold. Wait, see, where's Cena? Oh, Cena's in that crap match, right? Yeah, Cena's in that three-way crap match. Um, Don't you do it. Don't you do it. What? Baby. <laughs> Don't you do it. <laughs> I just want somebody better for Sting or Undertaker. But How I kinda, about Jericho? Uh, ooh. That's the opposite. Ooh, you're, you're influencing me. <laughs> there, uh, Sting there versus honest Jericho? To God, there that could be fun. There's a trombone sound sad enough for that match. You know what, I'm just, I'm guys? I'm just trying to think of guys who aren't on the card. You know what? All. I think this is within the realm of possibility. I might be stretching it slightly, but I think it's been proven that it could be. Ricky Steamboat. Versus? Sting. <laughs> wow. Okay. I gotta, you know what? That's not terrible because we saw we saw Steamboat, what was that, the year that he wrestled with Snuka and Piper yep. against Jericho? Yep. And Steamboat had like three or four matches like that right was around like, what? It was three, fantastic. four I'd years rather, ago? I was saying Ricky Steamboat is more plausible than Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah. That's AJ, you are not the only drunk person here. <laughs> I would have rather seen Listen, Steamboat versus Steve, Brian. Austin's got, Austin's got two bad knees and, and wrestled more recently. Steamboat has wrestled more recently than Austin. That is true. That's true. That this is true. And also, oh, Austin, has said repeatedly, Austin has said repeatedly that he's not going to wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's not going to do it. So I, I could see them bringing back Steamboat for a match. All right. So w this has to be completely in the realm of possibility, or is this just uh, like I can make up whatever? I'm yeah, but, like. but keep a lid on your brain for a second there, AJ. You're on deck. Eamon, you're up right now. 
Okay, I have a, I, I think I know what I'm, I, I think I had an idea of knowing what I'm going to do with mine, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, the four-way tag's becoming a tag match. It's just Usos and Ken Bazaar. Can he ask two like that? Well, um, you know, what, what, what oh, we that's can say question. is that, but, well, it does get a little bit complicated, because we, could we just be saying that they're, that he's taking out this entire match and replacing it with. Can match, I do that? You yeah, state I it so, when yeah. you take okay. out a match. You on, have to on, bring in a match with completely different people. So technically, I shouldn't allow him to just. Technically, I can't do that. You okay, are. Well, I have another idea. But you are you changing. Can, you trade one of these guys out of this match into something else. No, because then my, you my someone thing, comes in behind you and cleans up the mess. No, because my thing was that I really didn't want it to be a four-way, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with a match that I made and then Bobby fucked up. <laughs> uh, before you had the chance to advance, uh, take out Hideo and Tommy and put in Dolph Ziggler. All right, good deal. All right, all right. We're all right, the... hold on. I have a question. If we have Bobby on next week and he just takes out Ziggler, Bobby, Bobby, um, hey Bobby, no. <laughs> Bobby, I don't care what version of you is going to be choosing in this mayhem minute. <laughs> You're not fucking with that match. I really hope it's Ronda FJ Town. <laughs> We didn't, run, we, we didn't record that for gold. No one gets the joke now. I don't care. Oh, don't, Not don't even don't the care. Patreon guys. <laughs> don't it's Patreon then. Fine. I hey, two of them. They're in the chat room. Two of them were here for it, so that's okay. The feed was down. <laughs> but two of them were in the uh, hangout, so. But yeah, that's my pick. All right, who's next? AJ, you're up. Garza's on deck. Right. I have to be entirely honest. When you listed all the matches out, I was actually quite happy. You know, it had just been like, that's that's the card. Uh, but now that we've ruined it, uh, <laughs> can I? <laughs> um, I I want this, and I know this is not. I need to ask this question. This is another inside the realm of possibility. Can I get Dean Malenko? No. Uh, no. Dean's pretty no. messed up, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Oh. I, I will say this: this is this is what I would have done. Uh, I would have added Malenko to that Brian Ziggler match, <laughs> and I would have just Jeez. just just took my taken my pants off and just let my flag fly uh, <laughs> for a technical wrestling bonkers match. But we're not going to get that because you guys think it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um. No. <laughs> Dying of fire. I, there, Who? There's not enough. Taker and Sheamus can die in a fire. Take that match out. Oh. God damn it! Wow. Uh -uh. No, that match would be terrible. Uh, uh, I will replace that with. I will leave. Yeah, I have to take it out. So I'm taking that match out, and I have to replace it with two people. I would like to see. I would like to see Bray Wyatt versus Luke Harper. Oh, okay. Really, a SmackDown mid card match? <laughs> I would like to see that match in a in a larger setting where they're not on fucking SmackDown. And Taker versus Chicken Meat is not what I want to watch. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. Well, good I luck trying to think of shit during this mania then, AJ. Okay? I was trying to help you out. No, I, listen, I, listen, I now have the WWE Network. I can watch mania on my phone. I want to poop and watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a poop um, break. <laughs> By the way, I, uh, whoever put Rusev versus Lesnar in uh, is a goddamn genius because that match – just has German suplexes <laughs> all day long in it. <laughs> I, I, I can check that. I'll, I'll find out. Someone, someone can click on the uh, on the uh, on the mainstream Matt blog and figure out who created that match because I forget because uh, this thing's turned into a blur. Um, all right, Garza, you're up. LB's on deck. All right. Well, there's a match that it's bothering me so much because you have two Samoans against an American. So, Roman Reigns and Rock versus, uh, well, Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus, I don't like this, uh, Tissamon versus Tina. So, I'm going to have future of the WWE. And, uh, uh, 
What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, that's awesome. Know. And um, I believe it was Eamon that made the Rusev Brock Lesnar match. Bless you, Eamon. Thank you. Garza, what was your. What right, you have to say it again. You glitched out. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Wait. Before yeah. you continue, I would <laughs> like to re- remind you. <laughs> I, this is this is your first time of Mayhem Mania, and I want your decision to count and go through and be important. I'm going after you, and that matches my baby. <laughs> <laughs> but LB, he's our boss. LB, no Mayhem Mania. LB, I know, I know you're a John Cena fan, and you can't be like you can't agree with Roman Reigns and Rock teaming up against uh, Cena like in the match. So we need to make this. A fatal four-way. That's why I want to add. I want to add Alex Ryan. Oh, son of a bitch! (laughs) (laughs) Alex Riley. (laughs) Not not to spoil things, guys, but that's in the realm of possibility. Oh no! Damn it, Amen. The decision stands. Yes. (laughs) Amen. I'm Don't sorry. say not to spoil things that is and then spoil things. To be into it. <laughs> they have, the listeners have fair warning. Wow. Huh. Okay. Say it to his face, goddamn. Why did, okay. we, why did we put Alex Riley in the Miz Mizdow match before it went permanent? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's a horrible idea. <laughs> Is oh, and this, and this well, is better. At least we know who's taking the pinfall in this four-way match. <laughs> <laughs> Alex uh, Riley in the hard truth role. Um, all right, LB. What kind of hell do you have to rot on this thing? It's tough now. It's tough. It's nearly perfect. I <laughs> really can't see anything I would change. Well, here's the problem. This four-way tag match has been pissing me off since whoever made it. And it's got to die. It's a son of a bitch. I just don't like anybody in this match as tag teams. Really? Yeah. I spend like, most of my like time fantasy booking how Ambrose and Rollins become a team in this match. <laughs> That's how I spend most of my day. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like those two teaming up is a step backwards, and I'm very sorry, but no, I like Cesaro more as a singles competitor. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but it is my opinion. Now, Sork said something earlier that I thought was interesting. Oh, what did I do? You you ah. mentioned a match with The Undertaker and I think it was Sting, right? And you said, I want to get as much black as possible in this match. And didn't actually mention any black guys. No, I meant the outfits. <laughs> oh, wow. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. But you got my gears turning. And I started looking at the card that we have made here. And not a lot of black guys. There's a black female. Got Samoans. There's a, it's a, fuck you. <laughs> New day. <laughs> There are people painted with black. There are Samoans, which are, funnily enough, not, not black. black people. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Sasha Banks, who, who does a great job. Now, I, I do feel that there needs to be a tag team. So we're going to have um, – let's have New Day. Let's have all three oh, New Day. I, I thought Matt was going to – Matt went to put a heart in Sasha Banks. I thought he was just going to write, is black. <laughs> 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 oh, now he's doing it. <laughs> it's happening. Man, don't we need some diversity the blog, on the show. Don't, oh, don't put that on the block. That would not be a good idea. Internet's forever, Eamon. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to have a new, new day. day? Yeah. Yeah, this is being recorded and distributed. All, th- <laughs> All three of them. Versus, hold on, did Sheamus, did that Sheamus match get dissolved? Okay, so we got yeah. this thing, right? Good, this good. Yeah. Right. Versus Sheamus. And, uh, uh, shit, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Any Jack Swagger. Oh. And Christian. <laughs> the three. Uh, well, I, I, don't know if, I don't think Christian's in the realm of possibility. Didn't he get hurt? I think he's like permanently hurt. What do we do about everyone? Everyone who says I, Christians I in the realm of possibility say yay. Nay. Yay. Uh, yay, because I'm going to kill this match next week anyway. Kidding. 
Oh, it's not looking good. I'll, I'll allow it. Would you yeah. watch yourself, McCoy? No, Christian, <laughs> Christian's fine. He's in the video game. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's, he's not reality. Mike. He's listed on the superstars page of the WWE. Whatever. Is he really? Yeah, yeah. he is. Hmm. Wearing gear, not even wearing a suit. That's weird. All right, yes or no on Christian? One more time. Yes or no on Christian? Christian? Yes. No. Yes. yes. I'll say yes then. Fine. I'm All right. Right. The I three whitest white guys I can think of on the roster. There you go. Christian. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Christian. Uh, well, no, you. You got you got no 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 you got two white guys and a potato. No wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait, wait Matt Matt does it take a turn to put Paige in their corner? Oh. Sorry, no NXT guys this week. I mean, um, yeah, I guess we could. What? What? Well, fuck you, then. She's the main roster. Um, Sorg, that may come into play in a later round. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let me recap the. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And then I just have one more thing to tell everybody about next week. Okay. I think you're going to love it. <laughs> All right, let's recap the card real quick, Sorg. Okay. This is what Mayhemania looks Fuck. like after round Fuck. six. Miz versus Miz now. Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Sting. John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus Alex Riley. Charlotte like versus Sasha Banks. <laughs> Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. Love that, that match, too. The New Day <laughs> versus Seamus, Jack Swagger, and Christian. Goldust versus Stardust. And finally, Bray Wyatt versus Luke Harper. That's got pre-show written all over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not new so day versus white like jobbers. <laughs> not new. Not no, literally no, no. black jobbers. No, 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 no. Not black jobbers versus white jobbers. That's <laughs> nope. That not not six dudes who would be in a battle royal if they had one. <laughs> nope, not, <laughs> not, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorg, I promised you that I'd book this in reverse, so I've got something good for every week from here on in. Okay. Um, it's a good opportunity for me to tell AJ and Garza that uh, as Patreon subscribers, you will both be granted special privilege in an upcoming round. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll give you the details on that at a later time, but I wanted to give other people a chance to jump in because if someone wants the last minute get in on the Patreon, maybe they could take advantage of the privilege as well. Like, uh, do what I do. Week. Put your money where your mouth is and donate money to Patreon. And then you can do things like three minutes before the show say you want to be on it. <laughs> I don't know how scalable this is going to be if we get a lot of Patreon support. It's going to be greatly <laughs> scalable. I promise. Okay. Okay. We might have to put certain limitations if we get to a certain point. <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, one more thing. Next week, we're going to introduce... For one week only, something very exciting. I don't have a jar, an actual jar, so I just have this bowl, but it's going to be called a jar. One of the six participants next week will be randomly selected to choose a name from the jar of mid-carters. And they will be forced to place this mid-carter onto the card for Mayhem Mania. So I just I love done... Just for fun, I'm gonna draw a name for you, Sword. This isn't for realsies, but we'll just do it for fun. So we'll, this is, we'll, if this was on. happening, it Sorg, could look I want like you to this. be like Sword. You've been randomly selected to pick from the jar of mid carters. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is gonna be me fantasy booking. Oh, dude, Axelvania. If I get Axel, this is actually how they book Raw. Fucking <laughs> they pull out from time to time. Congratulations, Sorg. Mm. You drew Fandango. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> what's up, Sting versus Fandango? Fandango versus Sting. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I also love that Matt just has Legos in his house now with mid carters just drawn on with Sharpie. <laughs> I just want to let my kids. I want to let my kids know I, I did this with Scotch tape. So. Oh damn it! Damn it! Uh, damn it. Yeah, that's, that's, no 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 no. That's the dad move. When you're a dad, you get to have like random stuff. Like I could probably do this with um like Hot Wheels cars. I have that. I got that level of car <laughs> game. Put a little I'm tape, out. little tape underneath the car, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. We do what we have to do. 
Wow, nice mainstream Matt, play, everybody. At Mainstream Matt on the Twitters, one T, uh, mainstreammatt.blogspot.com. Uh, Matt, I hope that you don't have anything uh, lewd on your blogspot as they just changed the uh, the terms of service over there as well. I can't remember. <laughs> it's time to go look at the archives. Well, guys, <laughs> hey, let's um, take a second and find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week. But first, hey, you know, a lot of people actually... Um, Responded to us. We were putting a question out early today on Twitter and on Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show and at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Uh, first of all, our new Patreon supporter, Buddy Landell, our first executive producer, he is pledging $5 an episode of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Oh, man. Yes. God dang. He's stepping it up at the $5 Listen. level. You get some extra uh, be- fringe Landell benefits cheese. there. Uh, you get the super, super secret email that you guys don't get um, that I have to start making now because somebody's paying for it. We are on the show, it. and we don't get this email. No, they don't nope, get this I email. Do. It's great. Nope, it's they don't great get email. email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he says, what did he learn I'll from this week? I'm Brandy. I just took him with a snip to Brandy and read this email and say, yes, I made him do that. <laughs> My fucking Patreon supporter cave. <laughs> but Buddy Landell, he says, he says what he learned from wrestling this week, just how much he misses Bo Dallas, for one thing. Um... Kyle T on the Facebook says he learned that you don't fuck with Yashiko because she will make you look like you're from the Planet of the Apes when she gets done. We'll talk about that on that's probably... That's another story. That's another story for the Indie Mayhem show. New, new uh, Japan, Japanese wrestling gets real, y'all. Um, also, Steve on the Facebook says he learned that everybody else's job... It's everybody else's job to make Roman Reigns look good while he stands in the ring with a dumb look on his face. Mm. Uh, Missy M on there says, I learned that every week Seth Rollins just kisses the authorities' asses more uh, than the week before. So, there you go. You two can let us know what you learned from this week at Mayhem Show on Twitter and on the Facebooks and the Google Pluses. What did you learn for this week in wrestling, AJ? I learned that I haven't watched Raw in like a month and a half, and I've missed absolutely nothing. No, Yet, not really. nope. my uh, deep devotion to NXT has paid off more and more every single week. I watch it. So if you're not watching NXT, you should. If you're watching Raw and you'd like to see something more than 20 minutes of them talking, uh, you should uh, watch NXT. Yes. Mostly for William Regal coming out and just going, uh, yeah, we're going to have this match. And yeah, I know he doesn't get a championship match, but... Uh, Oh, Adrian was going to wrestle Kevin Owens because he put him in the hospital a few weeks ago, and he should get a chance to get back at him. Carry on, and William Regal just keeps that shit fucking going. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It is one hour of wrestling perfection every single week, and I'm very, very happy with it. So. All right. LB, there's a request for you to read what's in the chat room. Oh, God. Uh, well, then you're going to have to come back to me so I can bring up the chat room. All right. Matt Collins, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, thanks, Sorg. I learned this week that you can drive any Dean Ambrose fan to the point of insanity simply by singing Wade Barrett's theme song over and over and over again. She must have gone to bed. Well, that's the best interpretation of the album. No, no, she she hasn't gone to bed. She's serving you divorce papers in an hour. <laughs> Sorry, because this might be true. Uh, oh, what'd you learn, Antonio Garza at C2K on the Twitters? I learned that uh, after last week's NXT, uh, the show's now gonna be rated R because there's gonna be a lot of gore, gore, gore. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, geez, I didn't send anybody up. How's that, Argo Garza? Sorry, he wants you to roll your R's. Can you roll that R for me? Oh. That's why. But, uh, and that's anyway, why. Can we point out the? Uh, so, so I just realized this. Mad uh, Mad Mike was talking about the TNA Rumble and how they gave up like all of the fun surprise. Meanwhile, NXT brings back Rhino out of fucking nowhere, and everybody loses their goddamn mind. <laughs> kids, surprises. And, and Rhino, Rhino, by the way, <laughs> still showing up in IWC in Meadville in April. After just yeah. being on TV. Tremendous. Absolutely. By tremendous. the way, Rhino's Rhino's look at the camera when he like looks at Balor and then he's like walking away, he just kinda looks at the camera and goes, 
Got it. <laughs> and <then he> like, <laughs> <leave>. <laughs> Fucking perfect. I saw it and I was like, please tell me I'm not the only one who saw it. And then I read uh, Stroud's Best and Worst of NXT. He caught it too. And it's just a screen cap of <laughs> running off the side of the camera just going like this. <laughs> it's awesome. LB, did you catch up with that chat room? I did. I did. I don't know which one they want me to read, so I'll just read all of them. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Uh, first, what I what I learned. Um, so, <clears throat> Mad Mike keeps singing the WrestleMania theme song because it's getting stuck in people's heads. Yes. And I've learned that I'm immune to it because I've been watching Raw on mute. Oh. And I didn't even realize I'm not. It's not like consciously I'm not doing it, but I'm hanging out with you guys and I can't focus on both. So I just mute Raw and I don't know what fucking song he's singing. <laughs> It's great. There it is. People are complaining about the Fastlane theme song. I bought it today. I don't know what fucking song that is. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, I, I I completely bought it on iTunes today because I just couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> so from the chat room. Uh, so okay, Ronda F J Town. Uh, I learned that the best part of Fastlane was the part where Triple H was talking to Sting about his figures and legacy and whatnot, and someone in the crowd yelled, "He makes a great point, Sting." <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Kyle photography learned I learned that I am a woman a strong woman according to iflychat.com <laughs> which is there yes we've had, we're having some chat issues and had to do something different this week it got weird and everybody's a woman hey, everybody was given woman names when they women. came in <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hey, which fits right in, right, which, which fits right into our conversation oh. earlier so uh, this okay. is our, this is us doing our part I guess for equality uh, Tama Riz learned, I learned how my eyes feel when they explode into tears of blood after watching a grown man named China dressed in drag twerking. Oh, oh, you, oh, don't click that. How else is he supposed to get boners? Wow. And Wheels RWA learned that he hates winter. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. Uh, that has nothing to do with rest. Oh, that does have the, the they had to cancel their show. This no, week, no, no. Right. He hates winter. Yes. The TNA knockout that, um. Oh. Seduce and Jalea Love. Oh, don't we all? Eamon, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned uh, uh, that there's more evidence to my theory that Dean Ambrose is the stupidest wrestler on WWE right now, character wise. <laughs> <laughs> Get must- Getting himself disqualified when he wants to win a belt so bad, and then just walking in and showing the belt that he stole right in front of Wade Barrett's face, and then leaving. Yet still unscathed. most beloved, right? So, yeah. Yes. Uh, also, uh, update from the story that we had and the discussion we had earlier in the show concerning the ladies. Uh, tweet that was just sent 15 minutes ago from at Vince McMahon. Jeez. Uh, uh, we hear you. Keep watching. Hashtag give divas a chance. Wow. Whoa. Wow. That's oh, that AJ, AJ, AJ Lee song. coming back. AJ, AJ Lee's, Lee's back, back, baby. <laughs> AJ Lee return confirmed. <laughs> to get squashed next week on Raw in five, about five minute seconds. pre show on Mania. Oh yeah, boy! Oh Give boy! <laughs> uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? Um, I learned that I don't even think TNA is the fourth best wrestling show I've watched. Oh wow! <laughs> like seriously, and I, I, I don't even know. You have impact a chance, Mike. <laughs> Sorg, I've been trying. <laughs> I've I've fucking been trying, can Sorg. We, should we give up now, on now it? That, now that they don't even do a best and worst on Uproxx anymore, I, I feel like I'm the only person watching it back. Yeah, yeah. Really Spoiler alert, do. you probably are. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Except I for know. somebody except for somebody that left their TV on after a, a, a haunted Amish. Yeah. yeah, and about like a dozen people looking for a barbecue show. That's, that's right. They're like, what's this wrestling shit? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorg, I uh, must have misheard you. Did you say haunted Amish? Yeah, it was like an, a haunted Amish show, like for real. Like the wow. Amish are haunted, but the... Oh, I don't know. I don't know the context. I just, uh, I just found a new must-see TV. <laughs> I learned... Um, Crap, I forgot what. Oh, hey, you know, WWE Network, this is I, this is a phenomenon that's happened a f- couple times to me, actually. After a pay-per-view at this point, they play the pay-per-view until about 5 o'clock the next day on repeat. So I woke up, 
tuning in to the middle of Fastlane. Same thing happened with the Royal Rumble, too. You know, I got up at 6.30 this morning. Hey, Fastlane's on, you know, uh, at a certain point, you know. And then I go do some stuff and take a shower and do my morning podcast and go on, turn the TV on again. Hey, Fastlane's on again. Um, so, which is really interesting to kind of, like, dissect and rewatch little bits and pieces. And sometimes, of course, you know, we watch it in, at, a, at, a, at a party, right? Um so you don't catch everything, especially commentary. Oh, it was got awful. The, the parts, like the early parts of the show, got awful. You're right. Um, but um, yeah, kind of an interesting. Yeah, I learned a little bit about WWE scheduling. So there's that. Also, really cool to turn in twice today because today they were doing the marathon, the the best of WWE Network year uh, birthday marathon, and the last two NXT specials were in rotation. So I popped in right in the middle of the Charlotte Sasha Bank Sasha. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. But that match uh, from from um, uh, Takeover uh, uh, Our Evolution, and then uh, bits and pieces of uh, the you know Kevin Owens. I took a nap to Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn today. That was incredible. Um, but uh, you know, yeah. so did Sami Zayn. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. You can subscribe at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out our friends at BasicFitness.com if you like the music that we play on this show. There's only one song, let's be honest. Except for that one I played earlier. But they'll probably post from YouTube for that one. Um, please, uh, you can join us here in whatever form of chat we might have at live.sorgatronmedia.com, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com at about 9 p.m. Eastern Time um, every Tuesday every tuesday night follow us at mayhem show uh wrestling mayhem show on the facebook and uh, the google plus and the, the great rest uh, the facebook group for wrestling mayhem show we have a lot of conversations with people that learn stuff tonight for instance um and a whole bunch of other stuff going on and big thanks to michael allen at mike allen pr for the tweets and the notes all night long uh with us hey thanks antonio garza for joining us plug Thank plug you. away what, what are you guys doing over there at uh, TheWrestlingRevolution.com? Uh, just a bunch of show reviews. I just uploaded my Fastlane review. I hated it, so go read it. <laughs> and watch, watch the, the Meet with War. All right. And, of course, uh, AJ joining us, the Patreon contributor extraordinaire, Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! Yes. Woo! Absolutely. Uh, I don't have any sort of wrestling blog. Because uh, I don't think I need to write my thoughts down. I just like to say I'm on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's way more fun to do it here than write it. With right. Fingers, so. Right. And of course, at Mad Mike forty eight three at Amen two, please. Matt Mainstream Matt and uh, Papa Lunchbox as well. Right. Yep. Yep. That's me. Is it time for my thing? Uh, yes. That was my subtle segue into whatever. Too subtle. Too this subtle. note was for here. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, I am not going to be on the Mayhem show in the month of March. Um, I'm taking a little break from uh, from podcasting and most social media in general. But your pop lunch lunchbox is a little tired, so uh, got to gotta have a nap. Um, <clears throat> but the show is in amazing hands. If you're a fan of Panel Riot, which you should be, PanelRiot.com, uh, the shows will go on with the fine gentlemen you see here. We've got episodes with Mad Mike, Sorgatron, Bobby F. J. Town, uh, and a few other surprise guests. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and those are starting as early as this week, because why not? Um, so, yeah, I'm taking a little break. So this is this is kind of a goodbye. Um but uh, honestly, I'm going to let another Pittsburgher say it better than I can. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new and I'll have more ideas for you and you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will too. Thanks, everybody. Bye.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.